Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at Chaos Envision Update 1. The first highlight that we're going to look at is the brand new traffic simulation. So this is the anima traffic simulation that will allow us to create complex traffic systems in our scenes with multiple animated vehicles and different road conditions as well. The second is the proximity sensor. So this is more trigger based animations where you can have certain activators like cameras, vehicles and characters trigger a movement such as scale, rotate and slide. So this will be another really fun one for us to play with. And last up is the render queue. So this is where we can do automated batch rendering of images and animations across multiple different camera views. And we can also integrate all that with the AI enhancer and cloud collaboration feature as well. So let's dive in and check all this out. All right, so for the first new update that we're gonna check out, it's the traffic simulation. So let's go get a nice view that we want. There we go. So what we're gonna do is click on our anima traffic simulation. So I'm gonna click and draw a spline where I would like that to be. So click done. So now what I can do, I can go to Cosmos and I can go to vehicles. I'm gonna filter out by animated and I'm gonna click all. And we can see all of our animated vehicles that we have now for our traffic simulation. So I can click and drag these onto our window here, or I can already take the downloaded ones that I have. I'm going to set my vehicle count to five vehicles. And I'm going to simply click generate. Now that that's going to do is load in all of my downloaded vehicles, and it's going to put those on the path for us here. All right, now let me minimize this. So now we can see all of our vehicles were added to our path here. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click full screen and we're gonna get a preview of what these are looking like. So we can see the, the wheels are turning. All right. Now what we can do here is we can adjust the vehicle count, the speed variance, you can change the lane width, the speed, you can adjust the road rules, right, left, you can do the direction moving forward or backwards, you can set the road priority, primary, secondary, or you can even adjust the road condition, good, fair, or poor. So that's really cool for if you're doing, say, like a gravel road and it's a little more uneven, the suspension will actually move the vehicle. So that's, that's a really cool option as well. Now let's look at how we can have vehicles turning on to a same street. So what we're gonna do is again, draw another path. So here we go. I'm gonna have these vehicles turn on and merge. So I'm gonna click done, do the same thing, generate five vehicles for us. All right, now that those vehicles are loaded in, Let's go back to our full screen mode and we can watch what these vehicles are doing here. Spot. Right here. So what I can do is go to full screen mode again and I can watch so we can see the vehicle stop and they're going to wait for all the other vehicles to pass. And then from there, they will start merging into that lane. Oops, waiting for one. Now that other vehicle stopped and we can see the suspension there, it actually did a little little suspension step. And then from there, all the other vehicles are turning on. So it's gonna finish letting these vehicles go. There we go. Now it's gonna continue, continue moving along there for us. Another really cool thing that we can do is we can add characters to our scene and have those walk across the street. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but with the anima crowd simulation. So I'm gonna simply draw a path for our people to walk. There we go. And I'm gonna click done and the same thing. I already have some people downloaded, so I'm just gonna click generate. Now we can see what this will do for us here. So again, go to full screen mode. And now we'll see that the vehicles actually stop for people. So there we go, the vehicle stopped. 
people are moving out of the way. People are actually being able to walk past the vehicles for us. We can see the vehicles are respecting the other vehicles and being allowed to turn. Perfect. All right. So that is our anima traffic simulation. Our next new feature is the proximity sensors. So this is a very cool feature like we were talking about. So first I'm going to do is move my door a little bit so I can draw my path to that. I want my people to walk through. So utilizing the anima option, we're going to draw a spline again. I'm going to have them walk through that door. Perfect. There we go. I'm going to generate some people. So again, I'm going to generate about five people. All right, that looks good. And I'm going to go close my door. There we go. Okay. So now with my door selected, what I'm going to do is go up to our proximity sensor here. I'm going to click drop down and choose slide because I want my door. I want my door to slide. I'm going to click slide and now that object is tied to that object. And now what I'm going to do here is I can see when I hover over my activation zone, we can see how big that is. So I'm going to say, let's do one meter. So when that means one, any of my activators. So in this case, a camera, a character or a vehicle. So I want characters. So now in this case, when characters get into this activation zone here, that animation is going to be played. So I want my door to swing to slide about 1.5 meters. I want the animation to be played once, or we can have it do a ping pong or a loop. And I want that animation. I want that door to slide once that activation is triggered for one second. And I can choose the smoothness. So I'm going to do an ease in, ease out, give a more, a more natural feel. Again, let's go to full screen mode and we can preview what that's going to look like. So we can see there it is. My characters got in the activation zone. Nobody's in the activation zone. Now they are. So that animation is being played for us there. So this opens up a whole new world of possibilities for things. So with that slide sensor, we have uh, proc we have rotation and scale as well. So again, think of all the possibilities that you can utilize these sensors for. And again, all that drop down is under this, the create sensor tab. All right. In addition to these new features, the last feature is the render setup button. So if we click our render setup button here, this is where we're going to be in our render setup window, and we're simply going to add in some cameras. So this is going to show you all the different cameras that you have inside of your project. So we can see under the sequence here, we have from timeline. So what that's going to do is that's going to take everything that is in the timeline already. So our, our sequence down here. So let's play that real quick so we can watch this. So what we want to do is we want to render that. So if we go to our render setup again and then go back, we can take the sequence. And now what's really cool is I can click add selected. But if I want to batch render things, this is where I can or batch render views. This is where I can select multiple different views all at once. So let's just take a couple of these, take our AI enhancer as well and notice as well we have the options for the different variations and then the different environment variations as well. So this is where it's going to it's going to show you all the different variations from your variations tab and your environment variations, and you can assign those to specific views. So once I click inside of my sequence, I'm going to get the options for all the different export options. So resolution, render quality, output frame, and then where I want it to save as well. And then I can 
go to my still images and again I get the options for the different variations again with the variations you get unlimited variations so as many as you have inside your scene those will all show up inside of here as well and then again for the still images you can set the different render channels as well that come with Envision and then also inside of the output tab for the still images, we can do still images, we can do cloud collaboration, and we also have the options for the AI enhancer, which is a very powerful feature. So we'll show you what that looks like as well. Now, once you get all these set up how you would like, you can click apply current render settings to all items, copy them, and then paste them to all the different views as well. And then once you're ready, you can simply start rendering. With the images that utilize the Chaos AI enhancer, It'll be in your chaos cloud projects and then this is where you can see comparison so here is our rendering out of envision and now here is our enhanced version notice the grass and vegetation and now the people as well so we can see a before and after So those were some of the new updates. Um, some of the other improvements that have come with to Envision 1.1 is some bug fixes. And then a most notable one as well is the ability to toggle between bump map and normal map. So this was a much requested feature from our community. So we added that in now. So if you just toggle bump, you'll see it's for bump and normal map. And then also the next one is the transparency option. So when transparency, when the glass is triggered, you'll get the ability for index or refraction. Whereas if this is toggled, this is meant for materials that you don't want refraction. So this is good for shades and blinds, things like that, that materials that don't, that you don't want to have refraction. And when you toggle those back on again, that's where you get the options for more, more information about, or more parameters about glass. All right, and with that, that's the what's new in Chaos and Vision update 1.1. Thanks, everybody.